All right, we're in the transporter, the Larry Pegram Foremost Insurance Ducati. Did I leave anybody out? Uh, you got all the big ones. I got the big ones. We're inside their big trailer. And so we have another toolbox number two that lives in the trailer. Yes. And it's in this cubby with the doors open, and, and we're going to move the stuff out and see what's in it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we just got to move some things out of the way first. And you're moving. Go ahead. I'll just talk while you move. You're moving a shock spring guy so you can change shock springs? Yes. Yeah, it's very, very homemade one. And a little tray of goodies. Uh, that, that's what I'm going to leave there is for okay. balancing the wheels. All right. So we can start at the top. Let me take it from the top. Is a drawer full of junk. Wow. This is all the stuff like, okay, if you need to get into this drawer, it's a bad day at the office. Yeah, unless I'm building an engine, then it's pretty standard, actually. Oh, okay, so this is what you said before outside. This is the engine building thing where you, this is all the stuff that you need to do Ducati engines. Yeah, pretty much. So. A lot of widgets. Yeah, a lot of little widgets and things that I use occasionally. Okay. Or, or if there's some, maybe sometimes there's a special tool for the chassis, like this little punch that I hide in here so that nobody else uses it for something else and breaks it and then I don't have it when I need it. So even though I don't need this specifically for the engine, I can hide it in here and it stops it from getting used for something else. Inappropriate use. Yes. So basically a lot of little bits and stuff here. Nothing too special. Alright. Moving on. Well, Big long screwdriver. Yeah, different things. Yeah, big long screwdrivers. This is to push the, the swing arm pivot out of the bike when we change the engine. You know. What's that? Uh, this this actually kind of does the same function as this. So if we remove the swing arm pivot completely, since the swing arm pivot and the chassis, you know, in the uh, motor are all bolted together. I can take the engine out and put these in and hold the chassis together, yeah. Not all, really all that exciting. Oh, no. Not. Uh, this is all stuff that I use for setting the cam timing. You know, this bolts onto the cylinder head and when the valve moves, you know, this tells me what the lift is. Gauges, all sorts of very fine-tuned gauges. Yeah, just thrown into a box. It's nice. You know, special tools for removing the cylinder head. This is for putting in the wristband clips. All kinds of nice stuff. And you don't need this down at pit wall because, by golly, if you got to bust yeah, into I this. this at pit wall, we got problems. Probably should just go right to the B bike. <laughs> Uh, these are for changing the clutch. You know, it allows me to hold the, the clutch center or the hub. Then I have my torque wrench for the clutch. Flashlight. Special torque wrench. So it, does it stay at the same setting? Uh, no. I always back it off because I worry that it's spring-loaded inside and keeping pressure on the spring and make it, you know, right. lose accuracy over time. But, uh, you know... Do you have, I assume you have the setting memorized in your head? Of course, yeah. Yeah, for things that I do over and over and over and over again, I don't have to look at the manual. I know. Uh, these are all drivers for changing bearings. So everything is made to a specific size for a specific bearing, and uh, most of it's even marked on it. You just can't hardly see it, but like it says, left side, main bearing. And these are all things you built yourself? Did you machine these? Uh, somebody did. Some of them I've machined. Others, other people have made uh, who preceded me that's in my position here. That's a fine inheritance. Yes. Yeah, it's not so bad. Uh, this is just more pullers and holders and things like this. This is kind of interesting that somebody made. It's a crankshaft that they cut in half so that we can put the connecting rods in here and torque them down. And just basically, it's just a holder. This crankshaft's not legal for Superbike, though. No. It looks like it's been lightened. A little bit, you know, by removing the other half. <laughs> uh, 
uh, in here is where we keep all the fine measuring equipment, fancy things. You know. I love a cool gauge in a box. Yeah, cool gauge in a box with the foam, so you know it's nice. This is for measuring the uh, the stretch of the rod bolts is how we torque them. Instead of using torque, we actually measure how far the bolt stretches. Whoa. That's different. Do that to your lawnmower. Maybe if you were racing the Brinkley Stratton class or something, you'd have to do that. But, you know, the rest of them are all just pretty standard micrometers. And then in the bottom drawer, I've got some spare gaskets, manual, some junk. Now, what's... This, this actually belongs in the bottom drawer. It's a good thing we were here then. Yeah, which is used to set the belt tension. It actually measures how fast the belt vibrates. You know, it gives me a reading. It's supposed to be 75 hertz that the belt vibrates at. I we're talking about the cam timing belt? Yeah. Whoa, 75 hertz. That's a super secret data number right there for you to take home. You can look that up in your manual or your Funkin' Wagnalls. Your Funkin' Wagnalls. <laughs> and that's, that's the end of the... That's the end of... In the truck toolbox. All right, so we got one more, and that's the one that's going to take us to the pit ball. Yeah.